Hi, I'm 8Pack, and I'm here to discuss the performance improvements by overclocking AMD's Ryzen CPU. Here we've got uh, a test system set up uh, to do a little demonstration of the, this overclocking uh, improvement. We'll discuss a little bit later about memory overclocking, uh, which has improved in more recent BIOS updates on this particular board, but also across uh, the whole range of AMD uh, AM4 boards. So all motherboards from the really kind of uh, more affordable, if you like, Asus Prime board, right up to the Asus Corsair 5 or the ASRock Tai Chi, similar boards like this have all benefited recently for some, from some really improved memory overclocking performance. As, like I say, with later BIOS updates. Okay, so let's initially uh, run a benchmark. Uh, what I'm going to run initially is uh, Cinebench. Cinebench is actually checking how fast the CPU uh, can render in real time uh, an image. Uh, and what this is showing is that the CPU is great for, for uh, content creation, the professional, and anyone who has to do a lot of rendering or a lot of work across many cores. Obviously, the Ryzen CPU is also great in gaming. Uh, at stock and even more saying overclocked and pretty much any application you might throw at it. Here we've got a 1700 CPU which is the 8 core 16 uh, thread CPU but like I say all AMD CPUs are unlocked uh, so you can get the benefits of overclocking pretty much across the entire Ryzen range. Okay so I'm just going to click on Cinebench and open that up and also I'm just going to open up CPU Z so you can see what uh, frequencies the CPU is running at. Everything's at auto. So we have like 3.2. Uh, the memory is at basically 2133, which is the default memory of the IMC. And the motherboard frequency, which is also known as the cache frequency that a lot of, uh, a lot of regular people who are uh, committed to overclocking or people who want to tweak everything in the system, the cache frequency on AMD you'll notice is always in sync with the with the memory frequency. And what we're gonna do by overclocking is hopefully overclock everything I've just pointed out. So this is the stock result. We'll just quickly run it. And you'll see the picture here rendered in real time. Because uh, the CPU has is, is got eight cores and effectively can, and can run 16 threads, this has got hyper-threading enabled this benchmark. It quickly churns through the render. When the CPU came out, obviously the media were, were very pleased with the performance, especially at the price point. Like I say, with more recent BIOS revision, we can even improve that performance with overclocking. Okay, so we've got a, a score here of 1393, which if you, you check on the list here is actually better than a 12 core 24 thread Intel Xeon X5650. An older CPU, but that, co that CPU has 12 cores and 24 threads, and this is beating it by a considerable margin. So we're now gonna reboot. Uh, and, and overclock the CPU. And I'll save that score just so we can check against it. So we're just restarting the system. Then I'm gonna make some adjustments in the BIOS uh, to, uh, to overclock the core frequency effectively. And we'll check that the adjustments have been taken in CPU Z. So once the system's posted up, you can just hit the delete key. The way to overclock all Ryzen CPUs is essentially the same no matter what motherboard uh, you choose. So I'm just moving on uh, this Corsair 6 to the Extreme Tweaker section, literally down to the core ratio. And I know that every 1700 that I've ever tested can do 3.9 across all the cores, 24 seven stable. So I'm setting the core ratio there to 39. The BCLK or uh, clock, clock frequency is around the 100 mark. So 100 times 39 gives us our full frequency. So 3.9. Then I'm just quickly gonna set uh, our core voltage to manual and to uh, 1.45, which again is perfect to uh, overclock the CPU to 3.9 on all cores and, and so it operates stably in Windows. And I'm just going to adjust the SOC voltage slightly to like 1.15. This is not always necessary, but just for this test I will, I want to make sure it's 100% stable. Once I've made those settings, F10 to save uh, and enter, okay. So the system's now quickly going to reboot. What's also happened with the, the more later BIOSes or as the platform's matured is that uh, not only can we overclock uh, 16 gig in dual channel, no problem. We can now overclock 32 gig in dual channel, no problem. 
uh, to again uh, benefit from even higher density dims uh, and more capacity and still get the performance improvements. Okay, so I'm uh, just recording the desktop now so you guys can see everything that I'm doing. Again, I'm gonna click on Cinebench. Our score last time was 1393. Let's check CPU Z. Okay, so the CPU is uh, 3.9 gigahertz now. Again, eight core, 16 threads. And the memory is still at 2133 with the motherboard frequency at 2133. So the memory frequency and the motherboard frequency, at, or the cache frequency, sorry, is at stock. But the CPU has been overclocked to 3.9. Now let's run our benchmark. Again, this simulates any type of content creation you're doing, gaming with the uh, with the streaming software running in the background, anything where multiple cores and threads are needed. The reason I've chosen Cinebench obviously is because it's it's a, it's a good benchmark to illustrate in a short period of time how much the overclocking is affecting the score. So we've gone from uh, from 1393, which we can see here, right all the way up to 1655, just by uh, set, making sure that all the cores are uh, clocking all the way up to 3.9 under load and and that's literally from making three settings in the BIOS. All I've done is adjust the multiplier of the CPU 39 which all CPUs that I've tested from AMD uh, can run and I've tested maybe 20 or 30 uh, and just change the CPU uh, V core to 1 1.4, 1 1.45 uh, and the SOC. That's all I've changed and we've made such an improvement in our score uh, and obviously this actual improvement I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pass on to any benchmark you run, any applications you run, including your games. Close that down. Again, I'll save, save the benchmark score just so that we can uh, refer to it a little bit later. Restart. Now this time uh, I'm going to uh, make some settings to uh, improve the speed and the cache speed of the CPU. Now such high cache and memory speeds have been previously unavailable until the platform has matured and uh, improved BIOSes have come out. So basically in this I'm pointing out to uh, the early adapters if you like to rise on by keeping the BIOS up to date they can take advantage of even more performance and the AMD are indeed committed to improving the performance of AM4 throughout its lifetime. So here this time we'll move on to the extreme tweaker section. Uh, in the I overclocker we'll set DOCP standard which is effectively the XMP of the memory. Here we're using uh, the team group 8 pack sticks which are uh, essentially Samsung B-DIC uh, and their uh, XMP is 141431 at 1.35. So here we, you can see the, it's automatically set the memory frequency to 3200 which was previously very difficult on older BIOSes and, and now it's very easy uh, and it's set our DRAM voltage. Okay, that's all we have to do. F10, enter. The system's changing memory multiplier so it'll shut down for a, a brief second and then come up again. It's also obviously training the values of the lower sub-timings on the memory needed to run efficiently at 3200 MHz. In my testing, I found uh, with the new latest BIOS updates that the Samsung BDI, which are, are on, for example, G-Scale, uh, the Team Group 8-pack uh, memories here, uh, many Corsair LPX uh, are working, no problem, 3200 MHz, uh, in, in, indeed uh, 16 or 32 gig, no problem. Also Hynix, which is, for example, on Kingston sticks, some Team Group sticks, is also working at 3200 MHz and Micron which is on Crucial is also working at 3200 MHz. So now at 3200 MHz across almost all sticks you can get 16 gig uh, and in most instances 32 gig uh, working completely stable just by setting the XMP. Right we're back in the uh, desktop now uh, again recording the desktop so I'll open up Cinebench and I'll open up uh, CPU Z just so we can check where we're at. Again the CPU core speed is the same, 3.9 here. Click to the memory tab uh, and we've got uh, the memory speed. Obviously it's 1596 but it's DDR so you have to double that for the dual data rate so that's 3200 MHz and the motherboard frequency 3200 MHz. So we'll close that down and we'll run our benchmark. Bear in mind just overclocking the CPU got us 1655 points.
again the benchmark quickly running through what we've noticed with Ryzen is uh, cache latency timings of the memory does does obviously affect the performance, but certainly not as much as gaining uh, the memory overclocking from gain from improving the motherboard frequency. And now we're all the way up to almost seventeen hundred points, sixteen ninety seven, uh, which again is a great benefit from just uh, setting two two settings in the BIOS. Uh, and getting a really uh, nice uh, stable overclock and again a, a free boost in performance from which is what overclocking is essentially all about okay so that's the basic overclocking and I found that all memory modules now uh, up to 32 gig can can pretty much manage this by by setting XMP on a large variety of boards from the uh, more cost effective ones to the flagship boards like the crosshair hero have here okay so We'll just check uh, with two sticks what the performance on Cinebench is uh, with the memory at 3600 uh, C16 uh, with the CPU at approximately 3.9 and we see that this is uh, 1745 which is even better than with four sticks and the memory interleaving. So uh, you, if you have two sticks only in your board you can certainly push it above the 3200 megahertz and take advantage of even more higher performance. Of course to push above the rated memory speed of the memory may need a little bit more complex overclocking in terms of adjusting the primary and secondary timings and it also may need slightly more uh, voltage on the SOC, maybe slightly on the core to, uh, to get the same uh, overclock uh, and for, sh for sure a slight bit more voltage on the memory, maybe up to 1.4 or 1.45 on DDR4 is totally fine. So guys, that's about it. I hope you can take uh, something vis from this video, especially the early adopters or the guys who want to get more performance out of their Ryzen systems. Just plug and play your memory up to 3200 MHz now, uh, set XMP in the BIOS, and across a wide variety of uh, motherboards, you can gain this extra performance. And AMD, of course, like I say, is helping the end user by continually updating the BIOS uh, updating the microcode to make sure that everyone can overclock the CPUs to maximum and continue to get even better performance than what they did on launch day. I'm Apec, thanks for watching.